I have like six years of uh, experience in the front end uh, framework, Angular and uh, Vue.js. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in Angular, I have worked between uh, how to communicate between the uh, components and uh, writing RESTful web this APIs. Uh, you, need you need to consider this as an yes. RPA interview, not Angular interview. Uh, RPA, I need some time version. Just try to tell this. Uh, there should be some start, right? Your start should not be in the main interview. Let's start it here. Okay, then uh, let me get some time to prepare. No, no, just without um, Angular, you want to tell yourself about RPA. You have heard uh, some discussions between our, me and our team, right? Mm-hmm. With that, then. Uh, okay, so as an RPA developer, uh, uh, I was uh, I was including in uh, I think it is SDD system design process, uh, and I'm very much familiar with the RE framework. Okay. And. Go ahead, go ahead. No problem. There is no if else, buts. No one is validating what you are saying. I'm just yeah, yeah. Trying to I, get I was you out I'm thinking comfortable so like I'm thinking it. to get some uh, topics like from what we discussed. Mm-hmm. Mm. Do one thing. So I have worked. Sh- yeah. Share your screen. Open our team's notes. Okay, now use this as a reference. Everyone, take time, use our notes as a reference, and be ready. I will ask one more person. Your time starts now. I will give you a one minute timer. Hey Alexa, start timer for one minute. One minute, starting now. By the way, I have a few tips for using timers. Want to hear them? No. Alexa, stop timer. Okay. So, the my time is completed. Let's start. Okay, let's do it again, Prashant. Can you tell me about yeah, the sure. PA life cycle? Uh, yes, RPA lifecycle consists of uh, first we need to identify uh, analysis, uh, make a documentation of our analysis. Mm-hmm. 
You're asking about the life cycle or uh... Yeah, you can tell about the life cycle. So when I ask you about the life cycle, you need to tell different stages and what do we do in it. Uh, so first we need to identify analysis and we need to documentation uh, using the we have this PDD uh, thing like process defined documentation and after that we need to start a development uh, once the development is done it will be in the testing phase if the testing is got success uh, it will be done for the production and deployment uh, once it is up and run uh, successfully uh, we need to give some maintenance for, for this application okay so Remember this day and this video as well, Shashank, whatever you have said, and we also will ask, we'll have some mock interview at the end as well. Let's see the difference. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, who else are very new to UiPath? I, I want people who didn't work on UiPath. I can take the sheet and check, but please come out. Navin? Yeah, welcome. Are you RP developer earlier? No. Okay, just try it out. Tell me about yourself. Uh, can I can I tell as experience? Yeah. Yeah. So I am working as RP developer for uh, almost one year. I have automated uh, uh, three projects. And I have worked in web automation, Excel automation, PDF automation. Uh, I have worked in uh, uh, RU framework. I have developed one project uh, using RU framework. Yeah, I involved in uh, you know, entire uh, life cycle of RPA. Yeah, okay, let's take it mainly contains uh, analyzation, design, development, testing, and implementation. Okay. Yeah, I have involved in, uh, uh, involved in as well as the uh, testing team also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Okay. So, it's a very good try for the first time or if you ask me but if this is what something you are telling in an interview they can easily find out that you don't have any experience or you are very new and uh, you have only one month or two months of experience but you have you don't have any other information okay Navin? but your approach is very good okay let's try with one last member uh, DS, uh, what's your full name? DS4870. <laughs> Everyone name got updated, but yeah, yeah. they were the same. Yeah. Uh, actually, at the time of you know, form filling, yeah. I sent it out as a, my user ID. Uh, that in got saved is DS. Okay, Devender, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm not able to uh, rename that. Yeah, that you cannot. ID. Fine. Okay, yeah, tell me yeah. about uh, yourself, Devender. Yeah. Uh, my name is Devendra Singh. Uh, I have total uh, 10 years of experience, but in RP, I have more than ten, uh, two years of experience uh, across uh, other RP platform like uh, Automation Anywhere, Wildpath, and uh, Power Automate Desktop. But I have uh, majorly worked on uh, UiPath. In, I have handled exceptions. I have worked on RE frameworks. And uh, uh, data scrapping from uh, web pages. Mm -hmm. I have uh, done, I have completed uh, two major projects mm -hmm. on web pages okay. and uh, 10 small projects. Mm -hmm. So I'm following uh, software lifecycle, like uh, uh, starting from uh, initial feasibility mm -hmm. to project deployment. So I do all these steps, like uh, requirement and uh, development and internal testing and event before deployment. Do you know what mistake you all guys are 
doing can anyone try can anyone tell what mistake you have everyone in common Uh, not mentioning number of projects that we have done. No. Not confident enough. No. Everyone are confident if you ask me. Everyone are answering pretty well. But what single mistake you are trying to do? Like, oh, we were not mentioning uh, what exactly we have done. Like, have we worked on Orchestrator or only Studio or any other uh, AI tools or document understanding? Uh, like, I think we are not mentioning everything specifically. Okay. You haven't prepared your transcript for the interview. You haven't recorded what you are telling in an interview and you didn't go through that same recording and you you didn't prepare yourself with the transcript is it right if you prepare your transcript will all your issues be resolved or not yes no yes yes whatever you're trying to tell right now is on the fly yeah you are just trying to remember all the topics or all the points and you're try uh, you're trying to recollect them and if you're trying to answer them back see if you prepare the transcript for yourself then you would not have had this issue ramesh do you want to talk i'm seeing a hand raise uh no actually i was uh, you are calling out and name side like uh, new to your part so that i raise hand would, would you like to try once Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I do that. Mm-hmm. Actually, so uh, I have overall three point three years of experience, and mm-hmm. relevant also same. Mm-hmm. So I have good exposure to Ari framework and Orchestrator and Workus and um, RP Lifecycle. So I have worked on seven process end to end, and uh, I have worked on web application automation, Excel, and Word automations, mm-hmm. and uh, Outlook automation as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. My roles and responsibilities are like so. Um, one the uh, PD is prepared by business analyst and chat to us. I work on requirement gathering and in scope, in scope and out scope parameters, and I design the solution for the project. And I work on development in the sprint wise, and I perform sprint demo on each sprint end. Uh-huh. And uh, oh, one the development is completed, I hand over to UAT team or QA team. They will do the testing. Mm-hmm. And I help them in case if they need any help from myself. Mm-hmm. And once the testing is done, I uh, prepare the release notes and send it to production. And here we follow some hypercare way for uh, until and business is satisfied mm-hmm. with the automation. Once everything is done, we uh, give it to a support team. They will maintain the projects mm-hmm. and support the projects for the future for the business. Yeah. You did excellent, uh, R- Ramesh. so go ahead and blast in the interviews you are ready for interviews okay see some questions like scenario based questions or any technical questions you it will always arise but you are ready for the interview go ahead and take it up okay thank thank, thank you sir yeah that's great and also i am not seeing your uh, interview transcript if you can prepare your interview transcript you can get more points because um you are telling only on the activities like pdf automation word automation but you are not telling on a project level that will that will have an issue okay but again that's not a major impact for your role yeah sure if you can do that then you are you are on very safe boat okay fine let's uh, go ahead with today's activity uh, ui path studio okay i'm sharing my screen let me know once you are able to see it is it already being shared no 
uh, I just stop the sharing question. question. Yeah, I'm sharing the screen. Okay, now yesterday we saw, um, like, we just tried to discuss on RE framework. Now, what we will try to do, architecture, multi bot. Okay, um, so what we will do is the same um, RPA challenge, but we will try to divide it into, we'll, we'll try to divide it into dispatcher and performer and we will try to use okay now here goes our rpa challenge so this is our complete challenge file diagram so this is our to be process right edit in teams so if you see here this is our to be process now in this to be process what can be added as dispatcher and what can be added as performer go ahead tell Creating Excel data as a dispatcher. Creating Excel data. Mm -hmm. So this is our to be process. Uh, for the login, uh... So this is our to be process. So starting reading a file from a specific path and if successful, check for the next row. So this is looping in and here open start challenge. So out of this, which steps can be moved to dispatcher? Um, things that are performed on the website uh, will will be in should be in the performer. Okay. So uh, remaining all the and, items, uh, can it be in dispatcher? Like what? Yeah, are the uh, exception. Yeah, I think the send send exception mail should also be in the performer. Okay. See, I think you are missing few things. Open shared folder. Don't make things complicated. These are very easy. 14. So start open shared folder, navigate to Excel, open file, read Excel. So open RPA challenge, start all the fields, click start all the fields. Out of these steps, which belong to dispatcher and which belong to performer. So what is the repeated activity that you are doing? Now when you are filling the fields, then can we take a data row as transaction item? Every row is transaction item? Yeah. Okay. So can the first three items, can these be dispatcher process like open a shared folder, read a file and add it to orchestrate review. Like we are storing it at separate place. Can we have this? So we are not performing any activity. Yeah. We are just adding the items to orchestrate review for others to perform. Okay. Read data if successful. So I'll just, uh, add the items so open rpa challenge is not required in dispatcher this is not required for each row next row extract result <coughs> fill all the fields add item to orchestrator queue i will tell you on orchestrator how to work with orchestrator but just understand uh, 
this as a tickets now i am storing the ticket somewhere for others to come and collect okay now after adding items to orchestrator queue add a row to orchestrator queue orchestrator queue now once added check for next row so this is not required and check for next row so if the next row is not available then close process end the process okay send email is not required stop so in case of any exception send an exception email now is this clear or do we still have issues in this come on speak up it is clear yeah okay. so in the performer what what do we need to do so again we are going back to performer so we are not reading the data from sheet right not required mm. if successful uh, not required next row item so this is not required so here we will do something like this uh, this is our but we need to open the rp challenge and click on start is it right yes so do we can we say that opening rp challenge is our main activity so let's make a rectangle can you guys please go on mute Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you are muting me. That will not work, buddy. Okay, thanks. Um, so here, if we can see, we'll start an RPI challenge. So this is an init process. This is a first init process. Process will start. We'll open RPI challenge and we'll click on start. So after clicking on start, we will check for next row, or you can just say this particular item should go to this one. Okay. So after clicking on start, check for new transaction item okay if new transaction item is successfully received then fill all the fields and if the filling is completed then click on submit button and once the button is submitted then again get a new transaction everything done so if no more transactions then extract the result send email with the result and stop so if you see the to be process is still same whatever we are trying to do but the only thing that we are trying to do or understand is we are dividing the process such that all the repetitive tasks will come into or all the activities that we need to perform should go in here dispatcher will only add the items to orchestrator queue now let's assume if the process is executed at multiple machines can multiple let's say that if we need to input data for 100 rows okay if the same execution process is divided into two machines and will the process uh, execution time decrease or not so i have 100 rows 100 rows and bot is taking up one item at a time and processing it if it takes only uh, if only one robot is working it's 50 uh, you can say it's uh, that one hour if i add two items to the robot or if i add two robots accessing same orchestrator queue 
how much time will it take? It will be fifty percent, and half of the time. Okay. Like if it is taking uh, taking thirty minutes to complete one bot, mm-hmm. uh, it will complete in fifteen uh, minutes. So that may or may not be the condition, but obviously it will be more or less than like plus or minus fifty percent. Because there can be some failure conditions where the bot failed and it try retried, and the bot is very quick and it extracted all the values and it filled all the values quickly than the first one. So it it will be like plus or minus. Some may get forty and some may get sixty, but ideally the whatever the workload it is, it is divided into two different machines. Okay, it need not be only fifty percent. Now. If we are trying to work with our RPA challenge, okay. Okay, now I have added. So click on Start button, DT one, for each item, DT one dot columns assign to set the string. Now out of all these steps, which step should go <coughs> into performer and which step should go into dispatcher? Dispatcher. Transformer. Yeah. Add folder. Sorry. Performer. Now my performer will go into this performer, and dispatcher will have dispatcher workflow. Add sequence. Dispatcher. Sorry for the wrong name. Rename. Okay, so I'll just add everything from sheet one. Copy and paste here. Oh, what happened? Copy this. Paste. Okay. And here also I'll paste. Okay, now everything got pasted. Now in dispatcher, should we set the items or not? Should we fill in the website or not? No. Okay. So no. I'll delete this one. Uh, should I click on submit button? No. 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 So should I read the data? Yes. Okay. Should I click on start button here? No. No. Okay. no. Done. Now in performer. Coming back. Should I read the data again? No. Should I click no. on start no. button? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, should I enter the data? Yes. And yes. Uh, should I add items? Like, should I click on submit? Yes. So yes. So if you observe, single process, we just divided the processing steps such that performer is separated from a dispatcher process. Okay. So what I'll do? I'll just do a quick thing. Okay. So this is AI path. So I'll just add two folders. So I'll just add a new folder. Add sorry. New folder. So the folder name is Dispatcher Performers. Okay. And what I'll do, 
I'll just copy the separate these two are single process for us right everything is in single code now what I will do I will keep these as separate folders or separate projects okay I'm just closing everything now see basically what I'm doing I'm just creating a separate project altogether don't think that only we should do only like this but we are creating a project and in that project I'm having some code and there is a dispatcher code where we need to add the information so dispatcher will require challenge so that's the reason I'm having it now when I open this one so again all the dependencies will be downloaded taking this as a separate project but you can also create as a separate new project create a separate process and you can do it okay now here we go this is having unresolved activities so what's there in dispatcher read sequence and type into I think I just need to upgrade or minus packages system activities update yeah automation activities update and Excel activities also I'll try to update and save Meanwhile, I will also open performer so that it will be ready. So this is dispatchers and performers. And if you open dispatcher, okay, there is no code that's yet available. But let's open performer as well. So if you see here, oh shit, this came in into, okay my documents oh shit 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 so this is an issue okay let's do something go to home start a new process so I'm starting a new process that's not working for me uh, day 9 so what is today's date so I'm going back to the so, RPA challenge okay team notes okay so yesterday we have completed till day 8 so today let's go with day 9 day 9 so will day nine dispatcher okay and then we'll create one more process day 10 day 9 performer home process so this is the best way to create day 9 performer starting two new process and we will have code in here UI path and here you go dispatcher and performer I'll just try to add these here so dispatcher and performer performer code I'll just copy this and I'll paste it in the performer again just wait sorry for this but yeah so this is performer and 
dispatches and performers dispatcher challenge way path day nine dispatcher okay so this is my complete code so in the interest of time i will just invoke it and i will use it i will not do any other activity so this is my dispatcher process and this is my performer process super now in this main let's add performer code i'm just invoking it so that i can call without again creating the values in this i'm just calling the dispatcher okay open workflow so i'm telling that we need to add items to orchestrator queue so for that what i will do i'll just go to my orchestrator so i have already added orchestrator to my machine so this is modern project so i'll just go to my robot click on here so this is with the default tenant okay so i'll just have this one dispatcher okay so we are creating in uh, ui path cloud default tenant and folder is e modern workspace yes sir we at that modern workspace modern workspace and in queues there are multiple queues available but for now we'll create team july okay and then we'll just click on add so we have team july okay view transactions so we are covering on queue items as well we can discuss on queue separately but what i did is i just created a new queue and i am completing the dispatcher bot here so instead of assigning items what i will do i will just add items to orchestrator queue so the best way to add it is instead of a for each loop i will use add bulk queue items bulk at queue items i need to just give the data table and the queue name nothing else dt1 queue name so what is the expected result out of this can you guys please type what will happen after this activity i just created a new process i read the data using uh, read range and i used bulk add queue items so what is the expected result data on the data this is go on mute and type on the data in the spreadsheet will be uploaded into the queue this is correct answer so let's go ahead and try to run this code bulking bulk add queue items completed let's just refresh it and we can see all the items got added queue details okay close and view details so we have all the details updated or added the first name last name okay company name everything got updated so like that we have how many items in total 10 items now is this dispatcher bot completed or not is our process completed for dispatcher bot or not say yes or no This is completed. Accessing 
Yeah, we can check with exception later. Yeah. Okay, but the requirement is to add items to orchestrator key for us to retrieve it back. Okay, now important thing that you need to observe or understand is when working on performer, robot will not take all the items at once, like this for each row, for each data table, robot will not take all these items at once. But what it will do is it will take only one item at a time. So I will do something like this while clicking on main, it will just add it to the main file, main item. And instead of for each, there is an activity called get queue item or get transaction item. Okay. So get transaction item, we just need to pass in the queue name, nothing else. From where you need to get one item. This is like purchasing a ticket from a movie theater. Okay, so you need to purchase a ticket to work on it. So that's the reason you need to go with this one. Close. Queues team July. Performer, I'm just giving the queue name. Okay. Now there are more options we have, but the expected output result is one queue item. Okay. So there are few important interview questions that we have. Here are those. How will you add items to orchestrator queue? There are multiple ways. Using add bulk queue items. Add queue items. Add transaction item. How will you consume transaction item from orchestrator by using get transaction item get queue items okay so what is the difference between get transaction item and get queue items when we are working or when we are trying to get a new item then we will use get transaction item but when we got an item from using get transaction item item status changes from new to in progress but if we are using get queue items then we will get a collection of all the queue items depending on the status filter that we added all the items will still be in their own statuses it will not change okay so this is the if anyone asks you what is the difference between get transaction and get queue item then you can say when you are using get transaction item so what is this status of the queue item so here there are different transaction items view transactions so there are different transactions right so what is the status of those these items type in type in don't no no okay thanks so there are different statuses something like this new in progress failed successful abandoned retried deleted we'll check now new and in progress and successful states maybe we'll also check with failed state okay now we'll get one item okay now i'm just removing everything because we are getting only one item so they, do we need for loop for this again 
if you are getting only one item yes or no no there is no need so we are getting only one item so all we need is we need to use this item and fill the data that's it nothing else so i will just remove this item delete so i will also not add any filling of data now i will just show you what and how things will be moved in okay to and forth so if i am just trying transaction item so what is the output from here the output from here is properties q item not nothing of q item so if we are getting information from this is nothing of q item so this will give me a true or false value if it is nothing then it will be true if it is not nothing it means that there is some information so i will just add not in front of it to just convert not so this comes in if condition so let's just try to add information so i will just add a log message so in this log message let's add q item so is this the correct method to get information because from this we'll get one q item right if we just add it to log message this will print out q item so is this correct or not is this the correct way to get information from q q item is this the correct way it come as an object so i can is correct but what is an object what about others just say yes or no no need to explain what are you thinking so if you just try it no okay seshank is saying yes that's great what about others go ahead we still have 10 minutes only we need to complete it no okay yes devender ramesh ravi says yes okay so let's see and execute and see so when i am executing how many items will be processed or performed you can at least give give me a number all the 10 items will be performed or five items will be performed or three items so shank says one if i execute it how many items get performed or processed what about others if you are not giving answer i am not going to continue so i can say solve the 10 okay okay now if you observe i have already clearly mentioned in the notes that if you are using get transaction item it will not give you a collection it will give me only one item so only one item will be picked the first item that got added will be picked okay i am just using debug and here is my debug pointer so if i just hit on continue so this is my queue item continue again this is you can ignore this one but what you can see is if closed input click on input executing what is the output that we got we got output as ui path core q item it is just typing in its type okay like how we have variables like uh, integer string and boolean in the same way you q item is one of the data type that's for ui path okay now here let's keep a breakpoint again 
I said right this will be changed to success why it did not change to success why it is in in progress state why do we have status as in progress process not completed no process completed it got item it printed out that's the process right it completed it did not fetch the item it fetched the item right so if you see that's a queue item that you got as an output performer output so this is queue item we got one item already and that is this item but why it did not make it to success former once processed or exception then only status will change because we try to get q item once processed or exception status will change one thing that you need to observe is status will not change on its own like how it changed for get transaction item after you complete an item you need to set transaction status okay now this is used as q item so whatever q item you got from the top you need to set it but while setting it you need to clearly mention if it is successful the status is it successful or failed then if it is failed why it's failed everything you need to set it so if you don't set it this will not work so let's try to debug again so we got one more queue item step into so again we got core queue item so what is the status of this particular item what is the expected status what is the expected status successful okay successful but though it completed the activity this is still in in progress state if you observe this is still in in progress state now if we just hit or continue with the next step like step into and it will go back this now can you see this transaction ended it's clearly mentioning that the transaction is ended and let's see what is the output this is successful now tell me one thing if i just click on continue will it pick the next item or will it stop can we also update q item while setting up the transaction status no q item once added we cannot change them yes please wait for a second okay let's continue so yes it will stop the process and let's continue and check that okay it stopped the process and if you just observe this status is set only for one item okay now how can you set the status or how can you work with multiple transactions okay to just have a quick understanding of the flow what i'll do i'll just add a flow chart here invoke workflow sorry i'll just add a flow flow chart so i'll add a flow chart in this flow chart let's add get transaction item and this one I, we can also get this one okay so these are our two items 
so adding get transaction item and let's instead of having a if condition i will add a activity i will add a decision block so we can add if condition but decision block will give us a pictorial representation okay so here properties i'm just chopping and pasting it over here okay and let's add so if this is successful then i'll add it over here so i can add this station block over here this is sequence and if there is okay now what it is telling properties if there is a new transaction item then sequence then it is getting completed so after getting or completing an item can i just go back and get one more transaction item yes or no see what's happening i'm getting a transaction item checking if the transaction item is available or not in this sequence we are logging a message setting the transaction status okay we'll also have it outside let's also have it outside okay so we'll also have it outside and we'll go something like this it will go to set transaction status after setting the transaction status it will go and fetch the next item auto arrange okay can we do this okay now let's add one more item so if it is failed then what we can do we'll use next five minutes or next two minutes to check log message properties log messages no more items to process okay we'll just add this log message and let's auto arrange this one and then let's continue setting transaction status everything so you're getting one item and you're checking if the item is successful or not completing one activity setting the status to success getting the next transaction item and so this is how it is now is this re framework or not tell me that is this re framework no no so this is a plain process but what we have actually did or completed is we com divided the dispatcher part to the performer part all we are trying to do now is to consume the queue let's try to see that using breakpoint debug so will the next item be picked now or not after completion of one item will the next item be picked or not you can see the flow over here yes yes the, re the answer is yes the reason is so once we get an item it is completed setting the transaction status then navigating back to get transaction item so if you just see step into item then setting the transaction status getting one item and then closing again closing okay now let's continue and remove the breakpoint and let's continue so if you observe here by the last item it got no transaction data no more items to process no transaction data no more items to process and ended so this no more items to process is the message that came in from here log message properties 
no more items to process so no transaction data is the message from this particular activity it actually triggered a log message stating that this is completed no more transaction data okay so this is how we divided our process into dispatcher and performer now in future if i want to execute i can only deploy one dispatcher that actually brings in how many items that can bring in 100 items 200 items as it, as per its requirement but if two robots are executing a performer then each item will be picked by one robot and it will execute so tomorrow what we will do this is our activity for tomorrow uh, day 10 deploy process to multiple machines using single orchestrator okay so this is our tomorrow's activity so be ready for it and what you can ideally see or check is try to redo this one and by the way if you just want to add details or extract information from this particular item you need to give a key called specific content this is first name right if i want to get the information from the first name i need to get it something like this q item dot specific content of the key name dot to string okay so i'll just run one more time the dispatcher bot run file so while i'm executing that let's start with performer now let's run the file now instead of seeing q item ui path core q item you will see the first names of all the items okay so this is how you need to get so if you want to get the second name or the last name you just need to give q item dot specific content of last name Com for company name the same thing you just need to replace the key that's how you need to do it that's the reason i didn't concentrate much on that but yeah so tomorrow's task for you is to recreate this process and uh, add items to orchestrator queue and consume it okay so the only thing that you need to see is your orchestrator folder name so if you are seeing here this is modern folder default tenant modern workspace this should be same as this folder so close this is my modern workspace and this is where my queues are available if you miss something then you will not be able to see the queues one more way to identify is in this resources you will be able to see queue names so if i am able to see refresh if i am able to see july team july here it means that i am in the correct queue or i am in the correct folder so that's how you can check or validate okay let's stop it for today any quick feedback that you would like to give did you understand you didn't understand what same way can we update attribute value of specific content no you can retrieve it you cannot update it uh, for, for the queue item, item version like uh, here we have first name last name so we can update any value of particular queue item okay. while creating itself you can you need to create them Okay, this question actually asked in the interview. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And the interview itself said that we can update. Yeah. So how that how we can do that is if you can see view details, I can clone this one. Like I cannot directly edit this <laughs> item. I can clone this one. Okay. Now here, if you can see, I can download it as JSON. Save as. Okay, I'll just save it again. Transaction item. Open the file. Okay, instead of Lara, I'll just add J. Save it. Close. Cancel. Now upload JSON and overwrite. I need to upload the same file 
now the file name got changed like the first name got changed you need to download the json and upload the json but this will actually create a new queue item it will not we will not be able to edit the existing queue item okay okay yeah. any other questions no okay uh sanket better you post this question in the whatsapp chat but i will answer this i have one question in work queue that is is it possible to defer the queue item defer means what is what do you mean by defer ramesh please tell that okay yes uh, yeah, yeah actually so i'm working on one queue item okay once the uh, first step of the process is completed uh, uh, i want i don't want to pick the same item in next time Actually, so you just consider I am interacting with four application. You can't okay? pick it. And I updated the first one. Just a second. Sorry. You cannot pick it because when you pick one item already, okay, mm. it the status will be changed to in progress. So from a different bot, if you are trying to pick an item, the same item will not come. You will get a new item in the queue. Mm. Uh, oh, okay, okay. I just have one scenario like mm. um. Just consider we, I have a uh, internal uh, process having four application interaction by setting the application data. Okay. In after setting the first application data, uh, bot supposed to wait for twenty four hours to perform rest of the three application things. So, uh, what is the kind of logic we can have here? So there, how uh, I have already encountered this situation, but not twenty four hours. It's one hour. So what we actually did is. in this process we added a switch statement with multiple steps okay so in this we maintained a uh, status called uh, we maintained a uh, specific content called uh, step name okay so let's assume that there is step 1 step 2 step 3 and step 4 assumption uh, there are four steps step 1 step 2 step 3 step 4 so after completion of step 1 what we will do is in the specific content we will upload a, a new key called uh, we will upload the key uh, step to execute so while creating it for the first time step to execute will be step 1 now here it will be step 2 okay so when we do it for the second step and if we want to wait again for the third step we will create specific will create a new queue item with specific content with step to execute 3 now in the performer what we are what we will try to do is we'll keep a switch statement okay in this switch statement i will just give as q item dot specific content of step to execute so it will be either step 1 or step 2 and step 3 okay in that way what we can ideally do is we can go to the exact step that we need to execute Did I answer your question, buddy? Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, I got it actually. Mm. Mm, okay, I got, I got your question, question actually. So I got, I got your answer. answer. Um, basically, basically, we are just uh, setting up some status and we are directing what to perform the task instead of waiting. Yes. Ah, uh, we are updating status. Okay. Yeah, uh, I got it. The main reason mm. is if you want to wait, why should you wait? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, why should you make a bot to wait? Because by that time, some other work can be completed by the bot, right? Uh, no, 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 not, not like, like that. that. I use kind, kind of business requirement actually. actually I, if, if I, I set, set the data, data in application A, okay. Yeah, I do get yeah. it. Yeah. So in after completing application A, you need to create one more queue item with separate step, but the queue item oh. can be scheduled to run after twenty four hours. Yes, yes, right. right actually, actually, so it will take twenty four hours, hours to reflect, reflect in application, application B. B. That, that's actually the data. data will, Yeah. That's correct. But after twenty four hours, only then step two will execute, right? Yes, yes that's right. right. So that you can do. Yeah. 
or you can create complete separate force uh, four process you can create complete separate queues four different queues and you can do so, like that as well that approach also will work uh, yes okay now let's go with this one um if you having one lakh records in excel file how will you read instead of read range which activity will you prefer see the problem that we will have is uh, if you are having two big records or two big uh, lakhs and lakhs of records uh, you will uh, excel activity will fail so there is something called large excel activity that will help you or else what you can do is we will read only 10000 rows so we'll read 10000 rows and we will chunk it okay first read 10000 rows second read next 10000 rows next read next 10000 rows in that same way we will make sure that all the records are completed and we will add it to orchestrate request then you can consume it but answer can be large data excel, large excel activities okay is there any large excel activity in activity name large excel so excel activities so we have include free list activities okay libraries okay let's see package source beta following encountered an error it, it is in a beta, beta package i guess just check but there is large Excel activities, large Excel UI path activities. Um, I have a question. Like, uh, if it is larger Excel, is it possible to read over OLDB or macros? Yeah, you can do that. But even if you try to read OLDB or macros, then you, you need mm -hmm. to still store that information somewhere, right? Yes, it's correct. Okay. Some so temporary variable. Yeah, like we can split the data, read them. So splitting the data would be the easiest thing to do, because it will not uh, it will not take too much of time. I think the this is the same question. This is having fifty one lakh records. Okay. So that is the best possible answer. Instead of saying I will use uh, OLDB or because again, if you make Excel as OLEDB, again, that will be a huge object to store in the memory that you shouldn't do. If an application is running in background or minimize mode, how will you make sure data entered in the application? See, if you are using a simulate type, then it will be checking after it's added. Uh, but what you can do is you can take it to focus and then you can type in and then you can check it be first uh, you need to like they are asking would if you know the properties of type into like simulate like send window messages okay so these two properties will help to run in background if you don't check them then both of them it will be a hardware activity and this will fail so simulate click and send window messages so what is document understanding Okay, document understanding is a separate concept if you want me to answer right away. So let's assume that there is a document to be read and the document is a PDF. It can be an image as well. So the document should be first loaded into um, steps of document understanding. And this is, I have already posted it somewhere. document understanding UI path steps okay yeah I think this is good Okay, there are some separate steps. Digitize the document and then uh, load the uh, not load the taxonomy, do the classification. I will try to send you that image again. 
but ideally what we need to do is we need to digitize it so that uh, the image can get be converted into uh, a readable text format using OCR and then we need to classify what type of document it is and uh, once the classification is done we need to extract the information okay using a taxonomy uh, the taxonomy is a place where we store the key value pairs okay and finally validate and update I'll try to send it I'll find it somewhere in my notes okay what is good practice of UiPath developer best practices UiPath best practices so I have already mentioned that in our notes but you can just go with these these are the best practices you can just go ahead and prepare for yourself just uh, adding try catch block whenever necessary maintaining uh, modularized code making sure that exceptions are handled what is your roles and responsibilities yeah you need to prepare the transcript transcript uh, the existing transcript will help you sanket by the way how did you answer sanket unmute and talk yeah given like, almost like it was basic questions only like except these things everything is basic like what projects you did like how much like uh, what are the things what are the activities you worked on this one what is how about our framework orchestrator and they ask on basic questions only okay not they ask in the in depth except these questions everything was basics so if you can so as i mentioned only one year of experience they didn't went too much of depth so did you check with our transcript and i think transcript will answer most of these questions already yeah i, I, I seen a couple, couple of things, things like before, before uh, giving interview like, like i seen mm -hmm. so, so I, even whatever i seen that in the transcript i got some answers from there okay fine but yeah now thanks for the questions just post them in the uh, whatsapp group sure sure, sure. okay thanks everyone bye bye have a great day